Vanessa. Uh, bringing a baby into the home, uh, it's not only adjustment for the parents, for me and Natalie, it's going to be a huge adjustment, but also our 13-year-old Black Lab rookie. Of course, uh, this week we've been doing all sorts of things, getting me ready. Uh, daddy boot camp, so to speak, and, and this is one of them, introducing the baby mm -hmm. to the dog uh, that you've had for a number of years. And for a number of years, the dog has said, wait a minute, I've been the boss, and now I'm no longer the boss. Megan Montmany joining us from SPCA of Tampa Bay. Okay, uh, this is a program, Dogs and Storks. It is. How did you come up with this program? And this is the only one in, in the country, right? It is. So I'm very fortunate. You have to be a licensed presenter through the program. So I went through a 13-week program with a lady named Jennifer Shryock in North Carolina, mm -hmm. got licensed. But this is such an important program to help families get more comfortable, more confident, not be scared. Yeah. And also we offer it in the hospitals as part of their pre-birthing program. So Tampa General Hospital, Florida Hospital, Tampa, we're very lucky to have those partnerships. And obviously you saw a need. So what were some yes. of the things and, and desires and concerns and, and all those other things that people were voicing to you? Sure. So we have a behavior helpline and folks can call in and ask for help. And one of the phone calls I kept getting is my dog is a fill in the blank, mm -hmm. whatever breed that was. And they were really concerned. Um, they had heard a history. Mom had seen something. Dad had had an animal at some point that scared him. And now they're calling us for help. We also, unfortunately, had folks surrendering that just felt like they were so scared and so worried that they brought us their pet. And that breaks my heart. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want to see that. No. Okay, so how do you get those two to play nice? And I yeah. know there's a, an introduction that has to that has to happen. So yes. what would be your advice? So when we first bring baby home, that know that that's about mom and dad and baby and bonding. Mm -hmm. So the dog doesn't have to immediately be included in those operations. What I do encourage you to do is bring baby home in the, the car seat, put it up on a nice high counter, have mom sit down, have some treats available. So Gracie's getting hot dogs and string cheese this morning. <laughs> and just be rewarding the dog for quiet and calm behavior around the baby. Okay, so what is it about the dog and the baby? Because mm -hmm. you were mentioning, obviously, the baby cries, it eats, and it sleeps. Yes. One of the three of those, well, two of them, mm -hmm. will disrupt the dog because when it's food time, that's when the dog wants some food. Yes. When the baby's crying, uh, yep. not exactly pleasant for the dog either. No, it's not. Their sense of smell, their sense of hearing is so much more refined than ours is. And if you think about a baby, a baby cries an alarm. Everybody gets up and goes running to see. And we have to help the dog also cope with that, that, ow, that hurt, right? That their hearing is so sensitive. How can we cope them through that? So one of the things I recommend folks do is get a CD of a baby crying or pu I'll pull it up. I know YouTube's got great videos out there. Play it really quiet so the dog doesn't necessarily respond to it and just lots of treats, lots of cookies for quiet, calm behaviors and then you can start turning it up a little bit louder. Now I know dogs can feel neglected as soon as the baby comes home so yeah. how can you... How can you, everybody play nice, especially the parents, show some attention towards the dog? Exactly. So it's all about bonding time, right? And so we want to make sure that we give the dog some things that they can do. And that also helps the family preserve their bond, right? Where mom and dad start to feel detached from their dog because now a new baby is, is on board. Um, one of the things I recommend is a food puzzle toy. So I brought Gracie one this morning and she's already helped herself to her <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> but you can also make a food puzzle toy for your dog. Really, really easy. You can sit on the couch and just toss them some treats. So instead of getting their dinner from a dish, all you have to do is just hand them their, hey, Gracie Mae, good girl. All you have to do instead is just toss their treats. And it's a really simple way to bond with your dog is Perfect. to let them chase the cookies. Uh, really quick, I, I do want to yeah. mention that you said that uh, training can go as far as Gracie smelling feet, yes. not faces. Yes. So with with infants especially, right, it, the stakes are pretty high here. Yeah. And so I really want to encourage dogs to come check out their feet. Go sniff. Yes. Good girl. Good, Good girl, job. right? Good job. Instead Good of their girl. face. So let the dog investigate, but never their face. Okay. Dogs and sorts. You got it. SBCA of Tampa Bay. Thank you so much, Megan, for coming. Oh, good luck. It. Congratulations. Great information.